week. Welcome to another episode of Show Me China. You know, I've been living in China for so many years and... Hey, Brent, for so many years? Yeah. But do you know about the younger generation in China? Like what kind of apps we use? What kind of car we like? Like what clothes we wear? Wow, this is very nice. Where did I buy it? You can no more about this. Just buy this. <laughs> it sounds like you guys sleep with your phones. You don't even know what you've missed. What kind of app do you use the most? I use WeChat only. WeChat only? You're, You're so disconnected. Hey, what are you looking at? Look at it. You know Douyin? Dong Yin, I've heard that it's very popular. A large number of teachers are teaching uh, unique skills on it. For example, vocal music, dancing, and uh, English. I would like to know what you're I talking can. about. Free yeah. lessons? Yes. Fantastic. For example, for me, I learned a lot of basketball skills on mm. it. Mm. Look at it. I show you. <laughs> very cool. Yeah, this platform is named uh, the King of the Underdogs. <laughs> King of the Underdogs. <laughs> yes. Okay. It has more than 7 million followers now. Wow, yes. 7 million followers. More and more people get to know and uh, learn lots of basketball skills on it. Mm. And more and more young people fall in love with basketball because oh. of it. Wow, I can understand that. It's really cool. Yeah, it's very cool. At the same time, live streamers are selling things on Douyin, especially during the double eleven. Double Eleven has become the biggest shopping festival in the world, similar to Black Friday in the US and Boxing Day, and January sales in the UK. The live stream and pre-sale have become the new trends in recent years. <laughs> you count Xiao Xiaosha, the top 10 e-commerce account on Douyin this year, just broke a selling record on a cashmere coat on Double Eleven pre-sale. Hey, what are you looking at? Oh, I'm looking at Weibo. Weibo? Yep. Wow, what is it? Well, it's the earliest social media platform in China. It's often described as China's Twitter. Okay, it must be popular. Sure. Mm. For me, it's the number one platform for following trends. Well, you're a trendy girl. Sure, and it's really big. How big is it? Believe it or not, it has 600 million followers. Wow, 600 million followers? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And a lot of Chinese movie stars or celebrities have Weibo accounts. Can, can Weibo make them. somebody famous? Of course. Ah. For example, I follow Li Zuqi. I've heard of her. She's in Sichuan, right? Yeah. And, and she, she does... grows things and makes things from nature, and she sells things on Weibo. So she's a Weibo star. Yeah. Perfect. Let's take a look at her Weibo shop. Wow. I'd like to try some of that food for sure. Definitely. Well, Sasha, it's your turn. Tell me about a very cool app. Okay, sure. So have you heard about Little Red Book? Little Red Book? Mm -hmm. Nope. But tell me about it. It's actually a content sharing platform where users can share their personal experience on almost everything. So you use this yourself? Yes, it has about 100 million monthly active users in China, especially young women. For example, you know that I'm a coffee lover. So the first thing I got Beijing was to try to find the best coffee shops here. So I just opened this app and search coffee shops in Beijing. Then, you see, I get plenty of lists wow, based so on simple. real personal experience. I know some of those places. But mostly, I use this app to help me with online shopping. You see this? It has a unique tagging culture. So I use it for product reviews and or to discover new high quality brands or products when I am browsing and reading other people's sharing. So is this an app you think you can't live without? No, absolutely no. Ever since I had this app, I've no idea how I used up all my money. Miranda, I knew that was you without even looking. 
Hi, Ray. I'll tell you how I know. Because your footsteps are very unique. You always walk quickly and lightly. I'm trying to be efficient because I have a lot of work to do. Hmm. Well, tell me. How can you become more efficient? Uh, if you want to know, I mainly use three different types of apps, which uh, save my time. One is uh, I'm ordering a car by Taxi. an app. I always get it in one or two minutes. And also, uh, I can do a lot of work on the cab because I don't need to drive the car. And a lot of Chinese people are doing this. Do you know how many Chinese people are using those uh, car hailing app? I have no idea. One of the apps, it is said that they have 400 million monthly active users. Wow, I think that's the one I'm using because they've got an English version and it's easy for me. Great. And also I'm using this, May 20, to order food. A lot of good restaurants are providing food delivery. Look at it. There are a lot of good restaurants around us. So uh, using that app, I don't need to cook and also I don't need to go to the supermarket, which sleep a lot of time. And also I use JD.com, which is very popular. And JD is very fast. It's to buy the daily groceries and you don't need shopping anymore. So because JD has its own independent delivery system. So for example, if you order a microwave now, it is said that you can get it tomorrow morning. Wow. Yes, yeah, very fast. So I can be very productive. So really, I think you're a master of multitasking. Thank you. And actually, what we learned is younger people know much more about apps than older people do because they're much more familiar and they have fun with them. So my suggestion is ask a younger person about apps and it'll make your life much better.